Hello and welcome back to IGCSE ICT papers. We will be solving paper 3 1 for May June 2023 and we will be starting with the first task which is in spreadsheet. So let's start with the very uh, with the following pages. Uh, you have been supplied with the source file. At this time you're going to find only one CSV file. So let's go ahead and check what do we have in this file. Uh, okay, we need to extract it. So the first task, you create a new word process document. Make sure your name, center number, and candidate number. Let me keep this for, for a while here. Uh, let's create the word document. We need to add the name, a center number, and candidate number to appear on every single page and save it at the end with this name followed by your candidate number. For example, this one followed with your center number and candidate number. Let me just copy it. And let's go to our working area. Right click and then click on new and select word document. Uh, make sure you're setting your uh, work area, I mean uh, your center number and your candidate number. You're going to get it at the time you're working on the paper before your exam. Okay, let's open it and let's set these in the header or the folder. They, they, they haven't mentioned so you can set it anywhere. I'm just going to add three blank columns in the header and let's put the name, center number and our candidate number. That's all for the evidence file. Okay, for task two, for the spreadsheet, you're going to create a spreadsheet to calculate and display weather data about three towns, gold, Amarta, Bingchen, and Charles me. All right. Question number one, open and examine this file in your spreadsheet software. So let's check it. Let's expand it and let's check it properly. So we have average hours of sunshine per month for these three cities and uh, for those two months for January and February. And then we're supposed to have number of days with rain in Amarta over here. Okay, it's supposed to be here. And then for Bing Chin over here, a number of days with rain in Charles Me over here. And the number of the days of the heavy rain with the wind speed of Amarta in January. And number of the wind speed less than five knots in Amarta in January. Okay, this seems we have to provide it later. For right now, what you will find also here is town and the date. Okay, I see this the, seems the weather forecasting date. And we have the cities of wind speed, uh, wind speed, rainfall, and sunshine. For each of the cities, those three facts are available over here. Okay, seems that's all. And we have only one tab or sheet over here. Okay, let's. Uh, let's see what they're saying next. Uh, save this spreadsheet with the name weather followed by your center number, candidate number, and so on. And before we save it, okay, let me just follow the steps. Let's go and save it first. And one thing always when we save it, they haven't mentioned here to make it as a spreadsheet, but let's better to make it as a spreadsheet. And what I mean by spreadsheet, don't choose CSV file, better to go and choose the Excel workbook. And again, set your candidate number and here your center number. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, for the next part is in the footer, we need to put on the left side, uh, we need to put the file name and mainly no file path. So only file name. On the right side, we need to put the name, center and candidate number. Okay, so let's go to the footer. First of all, let's go to view and click on page layout and then you easily, easily can access the footer. So in the footer we need to the left side the file name so it's supposed to be appearing over here so only file name no need for the path name. On the right side I need to put my number uh, just for your information this numbers and should be matching with these numbers. Previously, just copy-paste it, but 
in your exam they're supposed to be also whenever you practice you better make it matching just not to confuse you I'm just going to make it with the same name Okay, that's supposed to be already ready. Let's close the header and footer. And let's get back again to our questions. So format rows 1 to 17 of the spreadsheet to look like this. Okay, let's start formatting it. I think better to keep them next to each other. And then we can format it easily. So that looks like merge from A till D. Cannot find merge here, where is it? And it needs to be a bit bigger in size, bold and italic. And the shading supposed to be difficult for me to see like this the shading is supposed to be with a bit of gray color and seems the borders are visible over here so let me do the borders later so I have Amarita these three cities and then January as it is okay there is one line empty that seems to be also merge probably or it will be like without any borders over here and then the next one and then this one seems as you can see this one seems wrapped so let me wrap it and what we can do is just reduce the size from here okay great uh, they all seems right aligned this also right aligned and this seems a bit bold and center aligned these are right aligned Okay, I think this is not merge otherwise. Um, let me go to the, first of all, let me apply right now the borders. Okay, done, then. This seems, A seems to be supposed to be a bit shorter, not too much. And okay, I missed one point. These are supposed to be also merge till C. As you can see here, these are merge till C. So first line is merged. Second line also merged. This is also merged till the last line. And they're supposed to be right aligned. Okay, perfect. And then I need to make these with the borders visible and this well it's not showing over here what it needs to be like merge or no so I'm just going to leave it okay let's go to the lower one let me see those sides okay so this a and then town is like only in a first let's take this first row till G Let's apply border, bold, italic, and let's increase the size with the same size of this one. So I'm just going to, uh, this was 16, so I'm just going to take it up to 16. And let's apply the border to be also the same thing. 
think that's a bit large. Okay, that's better. And then we have this line also. It needs to be bold. Okay, right now let's merge. Uh, before merging, let me make sure of the alignments. This is also merged and alignment in center. This is still G. Oh, sorry, this is still J and merge it. And the last one is still J. Okay, one last thing is this needs to be wrapped. So there needs to be also center and wrapped. Can I just highlight all of them and wrap them? Yes, it's fine. Okay, all these numbers, these are right side aligned. <clears throat> Let's check all the alignment. <clears throat> okay, this needs to be uh, vertically in the center. And what else we need to do? Vertically and horizontally both. And then all the numbers right aligned. Okay. Check over here. So perfect. That seems quite matching. I think I haven't missed anything. Hopefully, okay. I think that's perfect. Let's go for the next part after formatting. Apply the formatting in rows 15 to 17 down to the row 73. I think we applied it till the row 73. And then cells in row 1 and 13 must be merged. So 1 and 13. Rows 1 and 13. Salt in row 1 and 13 must be merged and center aligned with a 16 point as shown. Okay. So, yes, as we can see here, it is merged. Here also we merge some of them. Uh, as we can see here, and one point is here, the font size will be 16. So, I think it was 16 previously. I better make it back again to 16. Okay. Um, and the cells in the range A6 to C, uh, C11 must be also orange, as you can see here. Okay. Uh, print your spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure the page orientation is landscape. Okay, right now let's start. We're going to print it right now, but we need to make sure the page orientation is landscape. So what we can easily here do first, put it into a landscape. That's the first step, or we can even apply it later. The content of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read. To make sure of that point, I always recommend you click over here, this corner, and then double click between any of the columns. That's going to make it sure for you that everything is visible. Actually, previously was better. I'm expanding as it is filling one page. As you can see here, this is the line of one page. So that's also fine. Uh, the row and column headings are displayed. Okay, to apply that point, whenever we go to the print right now, so as you can see, it's supposed to be showing like this. Uh, one point is the row and column heading are displayed. So just go to the page setup and then go to the 
a sheet and apply here take row and column headings so you what you will be able to see the column and the rows and numbers are visible and then just print your paper that's for this task let's move to the next one question number four place in cells b3 to d3 formula to calculate for each town the average hour so we want to put in these formulas the formula to calculate for each town an average hour of sunshine for january round it to one decimal place uh, okay that's for january and the following line also says the same thing we have to place from the following line what they mean over here so this is for january b3 c3 and d3 and here we need to place for february so that's pretty easy and both of them needs to find the average hours of sunshine for each city and both of them needs to be rounded up to one decimal place so let's go ahead and start to calculate let's start with average And make sure right now a selection you need to select for amarta and only january so you need to pay attention to the date while you're selecting about the sunshine so keep selecting till you reach to january 31st so that's what we found we want to find out the average of sunshine and then comma uh, that's it that's the average that's going to give us the average and we need to round it up to round uh, is it round or round up let me make sure of it just rounding so we need to round it to one decimal place okay that's great and then for the next one we cannot actually we cannot just replicate it so we need to select it by ourselves i'm just going to replicate it and then i'm going to place this So again what I'm choosing I'm choosing right now for only Feb in Amarta still for the Feb so make sure you're selecting from Feb first till 28th of Feb because it is just 28th month or 29 okay so okay and it is already rounded up to one decimal place as you can see the average hours of sunshine in February more than January. Let's go for the next one. I'm still going to replicate it. And as you can see, it is coming for the next city greatly till 31st of January. Uh, let me make sure of all the points. Yes, that's perfect. It's working. And round it up to one decimal place. So I'm still not sure of one point. Let me make sure. And sorry that's not correct that's because the rainfall of Amarta so I need to move it to I'm just going to change this number and make it to the pinch and sunshine which is till January 31st okay perfect right now let's apply it for right now for February So as you can see here it is starting from february 1st till the last day of the feb okay those are sunshine hours in bing chin this is for e and this is as well for e e for 15 45 and this is e46 till 73 correct and let's go for the next one also here we need to change it to the sunshine of Chelsea so I'm just going to what we can do is just a very easy one just going to expand it here Oopsie. okay that's better so let me make sure till January 31st starting from the first date and it is in Chelsea for the sunshine hours 
and that's correct let's move it for the next one I'm just going to this is for Feb so I'm just going to okay perfect okay so those are all the values for the sunshine and round it up to one decimal place okay for the next one question number five we need to calculate from d6 till d8 uh, over here these three uh, rows to calculate the number of days that it rained in each of those three towns so we need to calculate the total number of days of raining so we need to get the facts from here those are the raining days and we need to calculate only the days that it rained skipping the zeros so there are a couple of ways that we can do it and first of all we're going to use count f the range is going to be this is for amarta so my range is going to be from here uh, is that yeah that's not mentioned january or february so that's going to be including all okay and then the criteria it's supposed to be larger than zero or net equal to zero so what we can do it's larger than zero okay so that's for the first one uh, for the next city I'm just going to replicate it and as you can see if I replicate it it's not working it's just needs to go to this one so so we need here about Bing Chin so let me just move it to the Bing Chin one over here so let's just take it That's better. Just F15 to F73. And again, the same condition will be applied to it, which is larger than zero. For the next one also, we can just replicate it and then change the cells. That's going to be for Chelsea. So for Chelsea, um, Just going to highlight it to the rainfall of Chelsea. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's carry on. So, speaking about the next question, question number six. Uh, place in D9 a formula to calculate the number of days of rain in Amarta, okay, which is supposed to be more than 7.5 millimeter happened. So previously we talked about more than zero. Right now we need to find the heavy rain that is more than 7.5. So for this one, we're going to use, uh, this is just to calculate. So we're going to use count if. Let's go back to nine. Uh, so we're going to use count if. And the range, it needs to be in Amarta and for the rain so let's highlight amarta and the rain it's not specified january or february so just highlight all of them and then the criteria it needs to be more than 7.5 so always between double quotation we need to put that's supposed to be more than seven point and that's going to give you around 10 days question number seven place in cell d10 a formula to calculate the average wind speed in amarta in january so it's specified it's in january in amarta rounded up to the nearest knot so this matters which is the nearest knot looking here that's d10 so we need the average wind speed this is the wind speed we want it to the nearest node, so definitely we're going to put it near to zero. So, 
First, let's find out the average, then let, later let's round it up. Average needs to be only for January and in Amarita. So Amarita and then January for the wind speed. So that's the average, and then we need to round it up to nearest node, which is zero. So just round up. All right. In D11, place a formula to calculate the number of days with wind speed, which is less than five knots in Amarita in January. So that's supposed to be only in January. We need to calculate it, and let's find the average of wind speeds in Amarita in January. So that's going to be this one. First of all, the average, and then, sorry, that's, 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 that's the number of the days. So that's going to be count, count if, for the number of the speeds. That need to be, yes, in January, in Amarita. So that's going to be the wind speed of January of Amarita. And the criteria, it's supposed to be less than five knots. As you can see also here, it's not clear, but it needs to be less than five. So that's it. And okay, that's for this question. Let's go for the next one. Save your spreadsheet and print your spreadsheet showing the formula. So. Let's control S and then go to formulas and sh click on show formula. And again, here it needs to be a bit adjusted. And so what we may need to make sure, row and column headings are displayed. Page orientation is landscape. Contents and all cells are fully visible and easily read. Okay, so to make everything is fully visible, again, highlight over all and double click between any of the columns. To make sure the formula is in orientation is landscape over here, we can make sure or whenever we're going to the print, we can make sure that it is in what orientation. So we need, want it to be right now landscape. And we need to make sure the headings and columns are displayed as we made it sure previously it is displayed. So right now still ticked and it is displayed. If you're not sure, you can go to sheet and make sure that it is displayed. And that's it. After that, we need to print out our formula. They haven't mentioned to make it onto one single page or fitting onto one white page. So that's not a case right now. Just make it visible and print it out. Let's go for the next part. Question number 10, print your spreadsheet showing the values. Okay, so that means we have to get back again here and remove show the formula. I just need to make sure it is adjusted. Okay. I guess I have some of the issues over here. Okay. Okay, let me get back again to this question. So we need to print this spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure that cells A1 till D11 are displayed. Let me make sure of that. Starting from A1 till D11, they're displayed. Only we have to display this, so I highlight it, or I selected them. The rows and columns headings are not displayed. The page orientation is portrayed. It fits on one single page, and the contents are fully visible. Okay, first step, if they told you only to select those specific values, First thing you need to go and select it and then go to file and print. First thing you need to do is to go and do in settings to choose 
print selection. So that's going to show only whatever you selected. Next point, the row and column headings not to, not to be displayed. So go to page setup. In sheet, tab, remove this tick. As you can see, there is nothing shown. And then the page orientation is portrait. So from here in settings, choose portrait. Uh, fits on one single page. As you can see, it's already fitting on one single page. But if it is having, if you're having any issues, at that time, go to the scaling and make sure that it is fitting on one single page. That will make sure definitely that it is indeed on one page. And everything should be easily read and visible. As you can see here, it's clear and obvious and visible. And that's it. Then print out your uh, spreadsheet. Okay, for question number 11, uh, in cell E3, calculate the total rainfall for uh, Chelsea in January and E4, also the total rainfall in Chelsea for February. We already been calculating other, uh, I mean, we have been calculating the sunshine for this category or for this town. We just need to put it over here, which will be the total rainfall. Notice that it is the total rainfall. I even got confused in the beginning, but I reread it and it is total rainfall. So let's apply it over here. Here I'm just going to replicate it because sunshine is already here. As I replicate it, it will come to the rainfall. I'm going to replicate both of them for January and February. So as you can see, I got the rainfall. It was the, uh, the sunshine and it came for the rainfall. The only thing I will need to replace is the total. I need the total rainfall. So that's going to be the sum. So it's going to be the total rainfall for January. And again, the same thing for Feb. Just let me make sure of this cells. And I need to change it to sum. As you can see here, it is showing the both the total rainfall for both uh, Chelsea for January and February. Okay. Create an appropriate chart to compare. So we need to choose the best chart. To compare, so it's mainly for comparison, the hours of sunshine, so that's the first point we need to compare it, with the total amount of rainfall, which is in millimeter, as you can see here, okay? Uh, for the amounts of January and February in Chelsea, so as you can see here, it's these two points that we need to compare it and make a chart for it for Chelsea. Uh, set the month category, uh, all right, I will come to this point. First of all, we need to tag this and this, and we need to go to insert and choose this one. Okay, before I carry on, let me read the rest of the question. Set the month as the category axis, so January and February will be January as the category axis, and set the average hour of sunshine as the primary value axis and the rainfall as a secondary axis. So notice here we have three axes. First is the category axis, second is the sunshine, which will be the primary one, means on the left side, and the secondary usually come on the right side. That's going to be for the rainfall. And notice here what they're telling us, this secondary axis, the rainfall, needs to be with a maximum value of 800, oh, 100 millimeter. Okay, let's start with the first point, first of all. We need these points. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this. Let's just put it over here. Okay, I have here the month. Here I'm just going to call it the average because this was the average of sunshine, so average hours of shine. And this one is going to be the total According to your question, that was the total rainfall in millimeter. Okay, so I got it over here. Let me just show it to you properly. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, perfect. Those are the points I needed. Right now, let's highlight all of them. And let's go to create the recommended chart. You will find that you will have a couple of charts to get it. The best, usually for comparison, it could be the line chart because it's really easy to compare the values. So let's click on it. Okay, great. Right now you will notice that I got the January over here, 
February, I got the mean. This is my mean, I mean a category axis. And this is the first value axis, and I need a secondary value axis over here. To do so, you have to click on Change Chart Type. You need to go to Combo. And over here, we need to add one more. So make sure the average sunshine, which is in blue, it's supposed to appear in line. And the total rainfall also needs to appear in line. So I, both, I want both of them for comparison in line. Okay, the next point, you need to activate your secondary axis here, this one. So this one I needed for the second one. So click on this one, activate it, and make sure that it is for the second category, the rainfall, according to your question. The rainfall is supposed to be the secondary axis. So make sure you're taking the rainfall to be the secondary axis. And that's it. You got it right now. Okay. Right now, the main point, this is already, they didn't mention the values here. So it seems okay. Category axis also seems okay. My legend seems okay. Right now, here is the last point that we need to set it. They said to set the rain ax, rainfall axis, which is the secondary, as the maximum of 100 millimeters. Right-click over it, over this secondary one, and click on Format Access. And then you need to go over here. Notice that it is starting from 70. I don't want it to start with 70. For comparison, it's better to be both starting from 0. They didn't mention, but always the comparison is better to start with the 0. And here, the question was clear to set the maximum to be 70. Sorry, that's supposed to be 100, my bad. Okay, already set to 100. And as you can see here, it is right now showing me the final chart. So this is my final chart. Um, I have all the points. Let me make sure of all the points over here. So fully label the chart. Let me put a name for it. So that's usually the comparison. As you can see, it's a comparison of average hours of sunshine and the total amount of the rainfall. So let's put a full in comparison. Okay, that's the full chart, uh, full title comparison of rainfall and sunshine in January and February in Charles Meme. I'm making sure that I had no spelling issues. Okay, that's it. And then the final point is fully label, save your chart and place a copy of your chart. So that's place just a copy of your chart, okay? So place a copy of your chart in your evidence document. If you remember, we created the evidence document, we still didn't put anything. So we better put the step. Uh, first, make sure of your step. So it is step 11. So go over here and write down step 11 evidence and better to put it into bold. All right, and then put your chart over here. I'm just going to take it, copy it and paste it over here. Okay. So save it and that's the last thing of spreadsheet. Make sure you saved everything and you put it all into one working area and see you.